Hi, I'm Elise Muller Devereaux, and today we're going to discuss snoring, TMJ, sleep apnea, and airway issues. Sleep apnea is a very common sleep disorder. In fact, it is estimated that 50 to 70 U.S. adults suffer from sleep apnea, with 80% of cases remaining undiagnosed. I'm going to introduce you to cutting edge science and treatment methods that treat the root cause, not just mask the symptoms, so that you can find lasting relief without a lifetime of medication and devices. I'm talking about the latest studies that most people and even some doctors have not yet heard about. Yet it is so simple and to the point that once you learn of it, you'll have one of those wow moments. There are currently hundreds of studies going on now in the U.S. and across the globe that look at the effects of breathing and its connection to many diseases, learning disabilities, sleep disorders, and overall quality of life. Sleep apnea was a problem, as was snoring. I would uh, I'd get in bed, go to sleep, wake up eight hours later feeling as if I had not slept. Another thing, I was a lifelong allergy sufferer. Since using the DNA appliance, I don't need medication for my allergies anymore. I can breathe, and it's wonderful. I've got a lot more energy, and it's sustained throughout the day. My workouts do better. I'm much more emotionally even keeled. In the next few minutes, you're going to hear about some of these studies, as well as major advances in medicine, and the amazing results being achieved for people just like you who are suffering from snoring, TMJ, sleep apnea, and airway issues. You will learn how to avoid painful surgeries and dangerous medications, or being tied for the rest of your life to a CPAP or BiPAP machine. Most medicines and medical treatments are developed to treat the symptoms, not the cause of the disease. This leads to a lifetime of medications and devices that alleviate the symptoms but they may not improve your quality of life or could even produce terrible side effects. If you are diagnosed with sleep apnea, you may be saddled with a CPAP machine for the rest of your life. There are health risks associated with the continual use and cleaning of these devices, never mind the loss of quality of life. Yes, there are medical treatment plans that include medications such as Ambien and Lunesta. But while they enable you to sleep better initially, they don't repair the damage that sleep apnea inflicts on the body, and they may lead to drug dependence. In fact, sleep apnea and airway issues have become a 21st century epidemic, leading to many other diseases and disorders. You can compromise your physical well being, mental cognition, and overall health when apnea and breathing problems go untreated. Doctors and scientists have been studying the root causes of airway problems for many years, and several informative books have been written on the subject. There is now substantial evidence that the Western industrialized diet has changed our eating habits in ways that have contributed to improper oral facial development. Consequently, this can cause the tongue to move away from its ideal resting position, pressed against the palate of the roof of your mouth. Dr. Robert Corrigini conducted population studies on people who moved from rural Africa to European cities and adapted to a Western culture with a soft food diet. His studies showed a dramatic increase in the number of crooked teeth, crowded teeth, and smaller jaws among the population of people. Dr. Eagle Harvold's research on primates concluded that nasal obstruction, mouth breathing, and low tongue posture also leads to crooked, crowded teeth and smaller jaws. The dental arch loses its structure and becomes vaulted, smaller and more crowded. This in turn will have the effect of elongating the face as the upper jaw moves down and back. This backward motion results in restriction of both the space for the teeth and tongue, and more importantly, the size of the airway. As children, our jaws are designed to develop through eating hard foods, much like our great-grandparents used to eat. We have since changed to eating soft foods and feeding soft foods to our infants. This has led to an epidemic of underdeveloped jaws in people in Western societies. Well illustrated in the book titled Jaws by Sandra Kahn and Paul Ehrlich. Here, 
we see a grandfather who had come to England as a young man with his children. His grandchild was born in an industrial society. You can see a progressive reduction in the forward dentofacial growth among the three generations. Another factor that affects the craniofacial development at an early age is bottle feeding and pacifiers for infants. Breastfeeding strengthens the facial muscles and helps the maxillary complex to grow forward, expanding the palate. Bottle feeding, on the other hand, can elevate the soft palate and drive the tongue back and alter its action, which can lead to airway problems. Lack of air while you are sleeping has shown through studies to increase or worsen the following diseases or disorders. You have now heard how we got to this epidemic and how traditional medicine treats these disorders and diseases without ever getting to the root cause. By not treating the root cause of any disease or disorder, you are merely relieving the symptoms while often opening the door to many other serious health-related side effects. So pretty much what he explained to me was that I had obstructed airways and that's why I clench my teeth at night, I can't sleep, I'm very groggy in the morning, I have mood swings and I, it was just very like painful all around. Um, so he basically said that in order for him to fix all this, he needs to give me um, an appliance. And basically what the appliance does is it's going to widen my jaw. After my jaw is widened, um, that's when, you know, I started to breathe better and, um, you know, everything pretty much went back to normal. It was literally snap of a finger after the appliance was on no pain everything went away it was the most bizarre thing that you know i can even say um overall gorman health and wellness dr gorman his staff everyone was just amazing this whole process you know was super fast super quick and i just feel so much better thank you dr gorman thank you to the staff thank you to everyone i mean i feel amazing Science and medicine have recently begun looking at the root causes of these common yet debilitating sleep issues. And there have been several pioneers in this effort to treat the cause, rather than just the symptoms. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Martin Gorman of Gorman Health and Wellness. He is a recognized diplomat for the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, as well as the American Sleep and Breathing Academy. Dr. Gorman is also a recognized clinical advisor at the Institute of Cranial and Facial Sleep Medicine. Dr. Gorman has been on the forefront of the latest, most cutting edge evidence-based treatments that get to the root cause of your sleep issues. His success brings him patients from all over the country and he is sought after to lecture across the nation. Welcome Dr. Gorman. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here with you. Dr. Gorman, thank you so much for coming. I know that in your clinic, you specialize in sleep apnea and breathing. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the new innovations and technologies in these areas. Okay, great question. It's great to be here. Um, in the 15 years that I've been working with sleep apnea and sleep breathing disorders, we've always kept up with the latest technology and the latest dental innovations. Um, what we always try to do is treat the root cause of a problem and that makes the symptoms go away and you get a long lasting result and an improved quality of life. All right. What are the current treatments for sleep apnea? Well, today there are two basic current treatments. One is a mandibular advancement device, which is a lower jaw devi device that moves the jaw forward. The tongue's attached to the lower jaw, so it brings everything forward, opens the airway so you can breathe better. You have to wear it every night to be successful. But then again, the other 16 hours during the day, you're still breathing improperly and your airway's still small and you still will have symptoms during the day. Um, the second technique that's used a lot is, is the, basically is a CPAP, which blows air into your system. And it, if it's on a high enough pressure, it's like sticking your head out the door of your car going 50 miles an hour. Wow. which isn't very comfortable. No. <laughs> now the CPAP also has other problems and the fact that if you don't keep it really clean, you can yeah. get systemic infections, which is not healthy. And also with both devices, 
studies are showing that over a three to five year period of use, is sleep scores get worse because of, you're distending the tissues and desensitizing the tissues, and, and they close down on your airway, and so it really becomes worse. So we really need to find something that is, works long-term stable, treats the symptoms, and doesn't give you other negative side effects as you proceed. Right. In the so what do you offer that's different? What we've been doing over the last 15 years or so is treating the upper and lower jaws by growing them larger, growing bone, making the jaws larger. When the jaws become large, the tongue has room, and when the tongue has room, it moves up and forward in the mouth and moves up toward the palate, and that helps open your airway, number one. Number two, when you grow the upper jaw and the nasal bone is connected like this and you grow the upper jaw, the nasal bone opens up, and now you can nasal breathe, which is far superior to mouth breathing. Right. Um, how long does that kind of treatment take usually? The average patient is about 18 months, but okay. it really obviously depends a lot on compliance mm -hmm. and on severity. We have um, an acronym I've come up with called GIFS. Oh. And that okay. stands for Gorman Indexes for Treatment Success. Okay. And for example, one of them is very simple. If you take your fingers and you pull your nostrils apart a little bit and you breathe and that's better than yeah it's much better breathing I without doing that like this. <laughs> okay, what yeah, this yeah, does it, it yeah. works like a uh, breathe right strip in a sense right but what we're really doing is we're growing the upper jawbone underneath the skin and mm. we're pulling the oh, skin wow. from underneath and getting a permanent little facelift interesting which women really like yes we do <laughs> right <laughs> So uh, what is the relationship between uh, sleep issues and TMJ? Very interesting question. We have been finding over the last two, two and a half years that almost all, every patient that has a sleep issue has TMJ. And we treated huh. TMJ in my office for over 20 years with a 90 plus percent success rate. Now we're finding when we, if we treat the airway the TMJ symptoms go away. Because the vast majority of people that have TMJ, what they're doing is they're clenching and grinding their teeth. And what that does is it wakes the muscles up in your neck, it wakes up your tongue, and you get more air. Interesting. So once we provide the oxygen, yeah. there's no reason to clench and grind anymore, get sore muscles, get headaches, and get TMJ pain here. Right. It just resolves on its own. So we've gone from, in the last 20 plus years, from treating TMJ all the time, now we're treating airway, and the TMJ appears to just be a symptom in the majority of cases of a sleep breathing disorder. Does this new technology work for kids then? Yes, it works great for kids. And what we like to do is get them early at, you know, five, six, seven years old. Because what's happening biologically is our, at six years old, the head is 50% grown, at nine it's 75% grown, and at 12 it's 95% grown. So you obviously can impact the airways and the, and the face and the aesthetic features much better if you can get the, the body growing the way it's supposed to go earlier on. So we definitely start on kids early, as early as possible. And that being said, it's also an excellent procedure for adults. Oh. Even though adults are fully grown, it's a little more difficult, but mm. we still get an excellent result. We can still grow the nasal airways, still grow the, the throat airways, get the jaws big and make room for the tongue. It all happens very dynamically, even in, in, in an adult like myself. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I was my first patient. You were? Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I, I took the program. I, I said I woke up one morning wearing my, jaw, my lower jaw device, and I, oh. I said to myself, I can't wear this another night. This is driving me crazy. Yeah. I'm not wearing it another 20, 30 years. And it's really fabulous because now I know what every patient's going through. I can feel it. They have a question. They have a problem. I've right. been there. Right. So it really, I can relate really, really well to it. One of the other things, too, with adults yeah. is males get this problem at a much earlier age than females. Females are protected by their hormones. Once they get to the point where they start losing their hormones in premenopause and menopause, right. their sleep issues and airway issues skyrocket and almost catch up to men. Wow. You have the night sweats, you can't sleep. All that. Yeah. 
talk to almost any woman that's gone through menopause, and they'll tell you mm -hmm. their sleep their sleep issues skyrocketed. Absolutely. As, as yeah. soon as it started. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very interesting situation there. But like I said, men get it. And one of the things you can look for in males is postural changes. And what, what typically happens is when you can't breathe, your brain is going to say, I need oxygen. And it's going to, what do I do to get oxygen? Well, what the brain does is it actually moves your head and neck forward and up. Mm -hmm. And that makes the airway larger. Hmm. So you can get more air coming and breathe better. The problem is your eyes are up there. Yeah. Now you can't see. Right. Well, your brain wants to see, so it brings your back forward. And that's why you see a ton of men with their backs forward and their heads way out in front. Right. And it's a huge indicator that they have a sleep breathing disorder. Hi, I'm Avi Finley, and I went to see Dr. Gorman after suffering for many years from insomnia and autoimmune disease and a list of other things. Going to him and having someone hold my hand through the process and make sure that I'm comfortable and make sure that I know exactly what's happening step by step was really important for me. Since I started many months ago, I've already noticed a change in the symmetry in my face. I've noticed weight loss. I've noticed my sleep incredibly improved. And these are things that maybe I could have achieved, but it's so hard to really be able to change your lifestyle, to improve your life when something so basic just isn't functioning. And Dr. Gorman helped me achieve that. In one of the testimonial videos that I saw, uh, a female patient said that she had more symmetry in her face and had some weight loss, and that piqued my interest. Yep. Can, can you tell me more about that? Can you tell the women a little bit more about that? Absolutely. <laughs> the, the thing with the symmetry is, if we look at people's faces, very few people have symmetry in their face. And it's typically because the bones underneath the skin and muscles aren't in the right place. And for example, in my case, when I grow, grew my upper jaw, which I'm still doing some, um, it wasn't symmetrical. Even though I'm expanding the left and right side of my jaw equally, I ended up with more growth on the right side and less on the left. So what I'm doing now is I'm just growing the left side and very little on the right. So to give me the symmetry. So very few people, most people are asymmetric and we can grow the upper and lower jaws to be symmetrical. Right. And be even and correct different midline issues with the teeth, et cetera. And mm -hmm. where the teeth line up with the face. The other thing as far as weight goes, once you can breathe and you're taking in more oxygen, mm -hmm. like when I breathe now, through my nose, I'm taking in probably 50, 60 percent more oxygen than I did before I started treatment. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So when I'm sleeping, and is when you grow bone, when you're growing up, and now you grow bone and you grow it at night. Number two, you lose weight at night. So if you have this excess oxygen, oxygen is a fuel. Fuel burns off excess energy, fuel burns off extra fat. When I had gained weight, mm -hmm. I wasn't losing as much weight at night. When I was sleeping, as I am now, I lost the weight. It was very, very difficult to lose that weight because I didn't have the oxygen to lose it. Interesting. Now I have so much more oxygen. When I try even the simplest little thing to lose weight, I'll lose a couple, three pounds like that. Wow. That's amazing. So we have many women that have lost 20, 30, and 40 pounds mm. during this treatment. And they said they'd never had an easier time with weight loss. That's so interesting. It's so important, just breathing, that, that getting that oxygen. Oxygen is, to the your cells and to, yeah. oxygen is the key to life. Yeah, it really is. Key to life. Let me ask you, um, how do parents know if their kids are benefiting from the treatment? Well, there's a bunch of things. Um, most kids that have the issue either have a they're, they're restless sleepers, they're noisy sleepers, um, their mouth is open, the reason it really, they, they even have ADD, that the, people want to put you on medication. Well, oxygen is the fuel that's going to burn that extra energy off. So if you get off the medication, you're going to find your child is not bouncing off the walls anymore because the oxygen is actually burning that excess energy. Mm -hmm. So we've had many, many young kids that were a little bit hyperactive that aren't 
hyperactive at all anymore. And it's all because they have more oxygen coming into the system and that excess oxygen is burning off this excess, their excess energy. And now they're just better students, more well behaved, no snoring, no restless sleeping, breathing through the nose, everything is fabulous. Okay, we hear a lot about nasal breathing versus um, mouth breathing. Uh, what is the significance of nasal breathing? That's a great question. Well, first off, I want to say something about mouth breathing. Okay. Mouth breathing is like the worst thing that you could do, number one. Number two, if you look in any textbook, medical book, any research article, any information, anywhere you can search, nowhere does it say a function of the mouth is breathing, mm. period. That's interesting. The function of the nose is breathing. The function of the mouth is eating and talking. When you breathe through your nose, you filter, humidify, temperature control the air, so your lungs are getting healthy air. None of that happens when your mouth breathes. Hmm. Also, your nose produces a chemical called nitric oxide, N-I-T-R-I-C, oxide. And nitric oxide is amazing. It does about a dozen things that you save your life and, and improve your life every time you breathe through your nose. It dilates your blood vessels so it lowers your blood pressure. It helps with the oxygen transfer in your blood to the tissues. It's antimicrobial, it's antiviral, and a host of other great things that it does to make our lives great. Wow. Our bodies are really amazing biologic structures, and if it's given the chance to perform the way it's intended to, our lives really will improve. Right. And yeah. at night, most people mouth breathe. You wake up in the morning, your mouth is dry. If you snore, it's almost impossible to snore through your nose. So if you're snoring, you're breathing through your mouth. That's not, then you're not producing nitric oxide. And then we're finding that with the masks today, masks that are being used for the COVID, most people wearing masks breathe through their mouth. Right. So now you're breathing through your mouth all night, and oh, now you're breathing man. through your mouth all day, Right. and you're depriving your body of the filtered air, the, the humidified air, the temperature controlled air, and the production of the chemicals and, uh, that help our body right. do what it's supposed to do and be, be healthy. Absolutely. So there's a lot of ad tremendous advantages for nasal breathing. That's um, great. It explains why CPAP, CPAP machines force air through your nose while you sleep. It can, and but the big problem with, with the CPAP machine is the fact that if you have a, a, a severe enough problem, the air pressure is so great, it's intolerable, mm. number one. Number two, and that's why the worse your condition is, the more likely that the, the, the device is gonna pump air through your mouth that takes more volume right. to your lungs, but then you don't get any of the benefits of nasal breathing. So you may be getting air, but you're not getting any, any of the chemicals any of the for your body to be healthy. How do you open the airways? Great question. When, we, when the appliances grow your upper and lower jaw, jaw, the bone gets larger. When the bones grow, they grow the airways. It's a trickle-down effect. And, and like I've said many times, if this is your upper jaw, here's your nasal bone. You can't breathe through your nose. But if we grow your lower jaw, upper jaw, it opens up your nasal passages like this because the bones are connected. So if one's growing, they're all growing. And that's why um, it's such a great technique because you get the increased size of your jaw bones, makes room for the tongue, opens up your nasal passages, open up your throat airways, and all of a sudden you can breathe and you just feel better, you're strong, you don't have this daytime malaise, you don't, you don't feel depression, anxiety, all that decreases because you have oxygen. Right. Um, if somebody is suffering from sleep apnea, can they just get rid of that CPAP machine? As a patient advances through treatment, we will re-give them a sleep test and check to see what the improvement is. We retake the 3D x-ray to see the growth of the airways in three dimensions. And once you reach a certain point, then you can get rid of your CPAP. But we have, you have to reach a certain point of health before we can you know, take you off what's ever, what's ever helping you be healthy. And when we get all the gifts, Yes, the gifts, the gifts, the acronym. Yes.
working, then we know you're where you're supposed to be. Thank you, Dr. Gorman, so much for this informative and wonderful interview. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the opportunity. If you or someone you know is suffering from sleep apnea or breathing issues, contact Gorman Health and Wellness in Los Angeles. Dr. Gorman and his team are currently offering a free consultation valued at $500. Visit mgormandental.com or call the number on your screen to schedule your appointment or to find out more. Breathe again, sleep again, live again.